these different parts of the business and they're shaping the presentation, the outcome of it. Are you blowing up here? I hear all these notices. I wouldn't worry We must about be at like a million viewers by now. Right, it's true. Uh, so exploratory analysis is like 100%, I agree with you there. Because Power BI is very rigid. You design your model and all we're gonna really gonna do is refresh it. It's true, but like again, the future of bringing together all these different pieces, like I just see, like I can build something on Azure so someone maybe, like I back in the day had this Excel project where um, they would put stuff in online, it would paste it onto an, an Excel file, like file in the cloud, then it would have another library that ran it, the formula, then it would print it as a PDF, and then it would like email it to them, okay? So you could, like if we take out the email report part out, like you could just create a service that you add stuff into online, and then it creates all this stuff, and then it creates a Power BI dashboard, and that's what you send out, right? And like being able to take all these different components and bring them together, uh, I see the future, but I think we're like four or five years away from me really like getting. I would agree. Yeah. It, it's, it's a very, a, here are the four corners, and here's your camps camp that you can paint on. It's true. This right, Excel is like, here are 1,028,576 rows and 16,084 right. columns. Do what you want. That's one sheet. It's just that, like, the, from a development side, like Excel 2003 was like that was like the classic years, right? Those were the years where everyone was making new stuff, and like you had add-ins, and so like um, on the add-ins market, I feel like with 365, that's they're they're doing their best to kill it because now they're only deploying on 64 bits, so I need the 32 bits. Yeah, totally. Which I saw are like right. So I'm just saying, like Power BI isn't even at Excel 2003 yet. They're still like at, oh, wow. They're still at like I love Excel. That. They're still at Office 2000. Oh yeah. Like, they're still figuring it out. Well, I just think about some of the Excel add-ins that have not been updated in years. Mm -hmm. They're still running like half of the world. It's true. Like uh, and that stuff is scary to me. I, I love vanilla Excel. It's like, what can I accomplish out of the box? without a third party, because I understand third party add-ins are like to make life easier. Right. But at some point when you build like your business into the add-in, that is when I get scared. I don't, you know, I've just like resisted the urge to make add-ins. Because yeah. even though there's a few I'd like, I'm just gonna give the audience, I'm gonna tell them what I wanna make. Yeah. I just want this back button that I can attach to quick access toolbar. It just always goes back maybe to the last like type of event. Like I was here at the cell, I was looking at this worksheet. I don't know how it put the events together. Yeah. But like that's a dream that I've thought about. It's just an Excel back button. We'll just send it to the product team and we'll see where they end up. Well, I mean maybe someone out there, there, maybe someone out there will build it. Chris you know? Newman, this is uh, this is your task. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so kind of we talked a little bit about the new stuff. Okay. I want to talk more about like where is Excel at today and where do you think that it's kind of going? Because in my personal estimation, I did not think that we would see an Excel twenty nineteen. I thought we were done in 2016, you know, like 0-365. You know, I'm not really, I, I, I like struggle to know where it's going. I struggle to like figure out my place in this because the VBA side of it, like look, there's lots of people who are still interested in it. Yeah. And it's fun, but it's not, it's not being added on to. Like it's not, and this is a major problem. Yeah. Um, I think that like. So was the introduction of JavaScript into Excel a good or bad? I'm still uh, trying to figure that out. I don't out. want anyone to dislike me out there. <laughs> I, okay, I'm going to tell you guys. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. Yep. It's not there yet. You just have to remember that like you've already gone through an iteration of Excel to where it is, and like it's a good product now. But it's not. <laughs> this stuff online just isn't there yet. But it will be there, because they have smart people working on it. So people love their Python and R. I feel like we're not that far off from that also being in Excel. Would that be a help to that community, or who is that helping? It just depends on what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like yet. Like, I mean, yeah, no one has really answered that for me. Like, what is Excel and R together? Yeah. Like, where I have like trouble with is like when Microsoft says, "Oh, we're adding AI to Excel 2016," and people are like, "Well, what's the AI? How do I get access to it?" And I'm like, "We're talking about the Ideas button." Yeah. Like that's not. I mean, some of the ideas have been good ones. Yep. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad idea button, but it's not. It's, but, it's, they're automating all of the machine learning now, where it's like very low level algorithms are like, yeah, we'll just present that to you. Yeah, and like it's like, I mean, it's I have not found it particularly useful. Yep. Um, but I like the idea. But that's not really like when they tell me that there's AI in this. Like that's not really what I think of and what people think of. Like when they're getting it, it's kind of. 
misleading. So what I would, would you say. like? Like cognitive services tied into it? So like text sentiment or image recognition or what would be helpful for the general user? Because they're, they're, they have that now in Power BI, so this is why I'm asking the question where they're doing point and click, low to no code, uh, cognitive services. So they're saying, we'll do text sentiment and tell us which column. I don't know yet. I think that... But if we were to look at like the stocks and geography, like yeah. that's one of the new data types. Yeah. Like if you had a sentence and you just clicked a plus and it said text sentiment. Yeah, that would that be, be cool. a good addition for the general users? So they're not writing API calls. They're not doing this and that. I mean, but like if you do that, then like they don't know what, like how do they know? Like, okay, like if you use a forecasting sheet right now in Excel yeah. 2016, okay? What is what is the forecasting model based off of? Yep. It looks like it's a REMA. I have no idea. Like, what is it? So I can teach people like how to use a forecasting sheet, and they like it. I have a great like example about you use Power Query and you drill down. You know, people like it, but I like have trouble teaching because I'm not even sure what the algorithm is. So if you're gonna have a sent sentiment analysis, which is like notoriously, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm still skeptical of its usefulness at this state, or at least the way it's employed in the way that you're describing. Yep. Because like, you would need to retrain it. Because if you're a California surfboard company and they said, this is bad in the bone, yeah. you know, there, that's going to be a negative. So we got some more comments here. What's going on? We have greetings from uh, Lima, guys. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Who's that? Who's from Lima? Saul Espinosa. Oh, yeah, I know Saul. Hello, sir. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave some in the chat. I'm just getting a chance to catch up here with one of my uh, personal heroes. <laughs> saying that. Jordan <laughs> uh, So really, the introduction of cognitive services, more data science things, you almost feel like it could be too much because we're not actually telling people why they've chosen that. It's just a click of a button. It feels like it, it's like the Watson days. Like when IBM is like, Watson does everything, and then you like go in, like I remember, I saw this presentation that was like Watson. Um, uh, like they were, it was they were selling us like what was pro which is very similar thing to like all these different online dashboard things, okay? And they're like, oh, it's Watson Power, but really it was just like a drag and drop dashboard. You know what I mean? Yep. And so like when you guys say, oh, there's cognitive services behind it, like you're just coming up with ideas, and you know maybe you're using really good algorithms for it. No one really knows the difference between that and Clippy, like figuring out what your resume said. You know, like yeah, it's the same. Like I don't, I don't really trust him. I'm not like, I mean, the ideas are slightly better, but Clippy, like he knew when you were writing a resume, so the technology was there. <laughs> like it didn't matter, I guess. So you're, I'm, I'm gonna I mean, wrap my head around this. There's some of the automation that they're trying to add, which I think we're both seeing, right? Yeah, I like the automation. I just think like to frame it as being AI in Excel, like that's the problem because it isn't. I don't know how you integrate Excel and R. Um, someone has to come up with a really good way to do it, but when they do, it'll be awesome. Like, yeah. I just don't, I don't know right now how like you bring those two together aside from look, you can send some data in R, or run something in R, send it back. Like, yeah. I don't know, like, I mean, could you make that process easier in Excel? Sure, like someone will figure that out. And it'll become part of the product, like that's not really. Does it speak to anyone's needs? Like is the R community living within the constraints of the one million row limitations? They don't really like Excel, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, so like. So text, CSV, flat file, what do they prefer? No, I just mean like they just don't like using Excel at all. Oh, I know. Yeah, I but like what is it preferred? Oh, I think, they'll just, I think they'll just get, like, get in, you know, they'll just take in whatever they get. Oh, nice. I mean, there's plenty of libraries similar to like Power Query. Power Query. Like with connectors, so yeah. I just think like how you integrate the two. It would have to be something that isn't just the two of them like side by side. It would have to be a very something much cooler than that, and I don't know what it is. All right, so I'm gonna take you across the just entire platform now. So Power Query, mm -hmm. kind of bringing that up. Would that be helpful to the data science community? Do you think that they would be like, oh wow, this is actually a lot better than some of the things we have available now? No. No. What's lacking? I feel like the preview window is like the biggest asset to being able to see your data transformations. Look, if you guys like did not translate it, okay, so if you had Power Query as an add-in for our studio, yeah, plenty of people would like it. Yep. Maybe it writes dplyr at the end, okay? Or maybe it writes, it, you create like a little thing that allows you to embed M code oh, yeah. into R, which that, that kind of could be cool. I don't know. I mean, like, I could see that it being interesting. 
that's like more interesting, but what you're asking a data scientist to do is to leave their R environment, which is like taking up resources, jump into Excel, open something up, then click like a whole bunch of Well, how would they get Power Query? How would they get directly into Power Query? Because you, you already mentioned a standalone product. Yeah, so if you had it, if you, I wouldn't even think of it as standalone. I think you'd want to make it as an add in because you would want to relate it to this, like, unless it just it connected just very seamlessly. So currently, Power Query is found in 12 different products in Microsoft's ecosystem. Right. It's deployed on top of a Spark engine now, too, so we can do big data transformations. So for you to say, can we have it ported over here to do our stuff? It's like, could people fall in love with Power Query? Not Excel slash Power Query. Well, like, Power Query is standalone. So here's the way I see it, okay? So like, people, like I'm doing a four day analytics like training that's like my sort of flagship on site training right now. And it's like two days of Excel, one day of R, one day of Power BI. And the thing that you learn um, that we're going to like learn through all of it is like Power What Power is the general user for that class? And like um, business analyst, financial analyst, someone who's used Excel every day and like wants to actually go and say like, here's how we do it in an applied way and they're not Googling everything, yeah. you know? So kind of like a graduation path for them to get to some more of the advanced analytics. Sure, I mean, that's a, that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. I just think more like, I've thought through a lot of these problems and like they're recyclable and I'm just gonna hand them out. So like, huh. if you if you like, if you <laughs> wanna learn how to do it, like I'll show you how because like I put a lot of thought and time into it. And so like, it is a lot of advanced stuff, but you don't necessarily need to be advanced. If you wanna be advanced, you can tinker with it. You can also like take it as is. The like, terms are always interesting, right? Beginner, right. intermediate, advanced. It's wherever people yeah. are at in their journey. So if they're doing a lot of reporting, either automation or any type of coding, I'm assuming with getting into R on day three, yeah. like at least has those prerequisites coming in. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, I think if you use Excel every day at your job, yeah. That's about it. Like if you oh, just, awesome. if you feel if you feel comfortable, most people who use it every day are financial analysts, business analysts, a lot of people with the name analysts, but they can also be consultants. Yep. Right. So um, uh, if you like operate in that space and you're using Excel a lot, then you can learn, even if you don't have any R experience. I'm just going to show you what you need to know. If you don't have any Power BI experience, I'm, again, I'm going to show you what you need to know. Obviously, like four days, the real learning happens afterwards. Yep. But the, these are the fundamentals that I think are important. Some of them are more advanced, but that's the problem with the beginning, intermediate, advanced, right? Like we just say, you have to take this wide journey, right? And I'm just saying, well, let's cut like a few of these slices off. Oh yeah. You know, let's just take that smaller journey, and you'll find out actually these things are more important, right? So that's. But like, this is the thing I'm going to stress, though. Okay, so if you use dplyr. Um, in that? R, well, I'm going to tell you, right? Yeah, yeah. If you use Power Query, they're so similar. So, like, Power Query creates this M code, right? But Dunfire is very similar. Like, you can take a data, a piece of data, and then you can say, select these, filter these. It's, like, very, very similar. So what I try to get across is whether you're using any of these technologies. The process is, like, they were developed by the same people. Is it code-based or graphical user interface for that? Uh, That's code-based. But it doesn't have to be. It can be very easily, like, constructed like super easily constructed. I'm sure people have done it. Got a million dollar idea then. I'm sure people have done it. Like, oh, I, just, I don't know, I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, if you could do Power Query, if you could write the dplyr, or the, like, I don't know if they care what language it's written in, it's just, dplyr is very elegant. Yeah. Like, it's a very cool solution, but it creates the steps in the same way that Power Query has a list of steps on the side. Like, it's crazy. It's like, the people who came up with Power Query definitely had known, like, this type of data work before. That's my thought. So I've been, I've touched R through some mm -hmm. generic tutorials and I was like, oh, this is something else to learn. I didn't see the immediate benefit just yeah. for me because I didn't see the investment time period for ramp up. But after hearing this, I'm like, oh, like why has it not been framed to me like that? Yeah. Before? And like, here's the other thing about R, like if you want to learn data science, like it, it's like, it is a language that was built by people who thought, what is this next thing we could add? So like you're thinking, oh, I want to have a sample database, and it has just tons of sample databases in it, and it's like very, it's very friendly. To oh you. yeah, it's very kind. What about it's Julia? Easy. Wasn't that a thing that was coming up? Or? Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Like, yeah, nobody does. But somebody did. I mean, I was, people have asked me about that before. I don't know, Julia. It was, a, it was a headline that said it was the best of Python and R combined, and now we need to go learn this other new language. I don't know. I think that like if you're going to be in this space and you want to be competitive, so here's the choice, like. You don't have to always be competitive, and you don't like have to like want to. I don't know. You like you could be happy where you are, right? But the five 
languages, at least in the Microsoft space, or five things are going to be Excel, Power BI, R, Python, and SQL. And that's like my sort of thought. Those are the things that everyone out there should learn to be good at, and probably you don't have to be good at like all of them straight up. RBI, is that DAX and M, or is it just? You have to figure out for yourself what that means. Really? Mm -hmm. I would agree. There's so, so much like, to tackle in that platform. Right? So you just pick pick which ones you want to specialize in. I like primarily specialize in Excel. Secondarily, R. You know, Power BI. I do some Power BI work. DAX is fun when you think about like how it's it's like Excel. But it's not exactly Excel. It's a hybrid language of both formula and uh, aggregation. It's, it's like Excel, Excel and SQL, right? Yeah. But like, think about this. So DAX is Excel and SQL, yeah. right? Power BI is like Dplyr. Like a lot of this stuff, you can get to the bare bones of it. It's just recycling the same concept. So it's not that hard to be good at all of them if you can understand that they were all designed by like programmers. So like, you just think like, like if you come in and think of it as a designer, you can design. But how do people get to that next level? Why are they not taking that path? Yet? I think they are. I think that like I think that. Uh, are you seeing more of that out in the field? Or yeah, definitely. Like, I think that most people out there working, I think the much younger generation, the ones who are using Twitch, know have already figured this out. That's why Twitch is like so successful, and that's why they like do really well on YouTube because it's all algorithmic based. So yeah. just if you understand the design, like that the coders put in, like you can you can manipulate it. And I just think we're just slow, you know. So the interesting conversation I had with a guy, he is very open source. Mm -hmm. And I was like, these are enterprise tools. And it was almost like, you know, just oil and water. Yeah. Like the difference between the two. What is it going to take for the open source people to come over to the enterprise level tools? Because you mentioned Excel, R, Power BI, and obviously uh, just some of the other stuff that was kind of going on. But when you have the ability to do both open source and enterprise, like how incredibly powerful. I don't know. It's gonna take. If I think, if I knew the answer to that, but people are like afraid, and he was a guy who was uh, deeply into but I like Python, Python, JavaScript, Python. and uh, as soon as he got into Power BI, he's like, he's like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. I see what you're saying. They just don't know what exists. So like many of them, um, people on the open source side just don't know what's there. Yeah. I'll, I'll like, I'll be honest, like, cause I've been in my like cave since like last year when I, you know, I, I was just trying to figure out what I was going to do, um, you know, with myself. And like, I realized I didn't know Power BI that well, and I didn't know M, and I didn't know Power Query. Um, and I still don't know Power Pivot, but I know DAX, so. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, right, so, um, I don't know, like, it just takes a while to learn these new things. But as time goes on, they are becoming more integrated. So we're still like, coming from a place where all these were different products. And now Microsoft, you know, is moving towards the one. Yep. Um, and so I just, I don't know. I just think we're just not accustomed to it yet. I mean, but we slowly are. Like, I mean, oh, look, at, look at the progress we're making. Like with Office 365. Yeah. Like years ago, no one even knew what subscription they were buying. You know, like, sorry guys. Well, that's what I saw with the uh, Graph API. I don't know if you've ever played around with that for I have like Office. Insane. Like yeah. the amount of things that you can do through an API to call Excel. If it was sort of like that OneDrive or some type of, you know, uh, Microsoft storage solution that was online, it was. I was like, why am I even using VBA? Now right. Now much automation exists. We got another. We got, I agree. I, many of the same, same concepts, concepts are still, still used. used. Thanks, Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. It, you know, it is a lot of the same fundamentals that are still. They relate product to product. I just don't know that enough people have a path forward. Which is always interesting. It's true. Things. I think we have some uh, messages. Yeah, go ahead. From George. Uh, George, are you guys in New York? Dang, it was I was just in Scranton today. Oh, oh sorry, man. Hi, George. Yeah. yeah, you missed it. We were expecting you actually. <laughs> <laughs> we sent we sent the package your way. It was mm -hmm. a nice fruit basket. Gee, thanks, George. George has been killing it. Right, we should be our side. Yeah. yeah, doing the definitely because uh, he's another base. Excel community member. Well, you know, I, we'd have to talk to George about that, but I think that he's more. Uh, he's in the Excel world, like he, you know, has a has a footprint here, but he does a lot more than that now. Like he, I know he does. He does like R and things like that. So hopefully, I'm being. He's still part of the family, though, right? Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. The way you made that sound. No, like... I'm just saying. Well, I just want to be like, because like I think that like some people have started in the Excel community and then they go out and do other things. Everyone's like, oh, you're still Excel, right? So like, no. I mean, with respect to George, you know, he does a lot more. He does these other technologies like R, and he's like uh, helps. Uh, 
design like data science curriculums. Yeah, he's uh, data camp. His course there was really awesome. I think he's got a couple over on Thinkful, mm -hmm. uh, either now or he's kind of one of the administrators. I'm making making our course for us for Excel TV. He should. Yeah, I, I agree. But that was like one of the great things I saw from George is he was able to kind of take this thing over here, pivot over here, but then also bring people back. Like, that's true. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's like, how do we get more people in the awareness? Of like, hey, you can go do these things and you can still come back. Um, I, I think it's that funny meme that's online where it's like stats, calculus, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the very end of the tail, it's Excel spreadsheets. Right. No matter how advanced you are, the world still runs on Excel. I mean, are you just saying, like, why are more people using Power BI? Or? No, like Excel. Just any of the Microsoft products, like the open source community, they're doing their thing. Yeah. But then how can they leverage the things that are over here that are also helpful that could reduce their time? Or is the open source just become I mean, that, that big where they don't need... No, I think that, like, what makes open source appealing is that it doesn't cost a whole lot, right? Kind of like Google Sheets? Yeah, well, like, think about that. Like, if you are going to base your business... Look, if you like go and install Enterprise, like how much is that going to cost you? And then everyone who's ever worked at a corporation knows that like what these IT projects become, like yep. the integration of it, and they like last for years, and they like they get their own little contracting community, and like you know the success becomes the installation of the program like three years after. So no open source gets like they still have to integrate, they still have to do all that, but like at least you didn't spend money on it like that, like the like the size you were giving to these giant corporations. I mean, it's just a good way to hedge risk. It's the way I see it. Like, Excel's cheap, so like, yeah. build a lot of stuff in Excel if you can. But like, the other thing is, um, I get requests to make courses, right? So one of the basic courses that I was requested to make was actually, they, you know, they were asking for example, they were really asking for was Google Sheets, right? And a lot of businesses are running on Google Sheets because it's free, because they use their Gmail account, you know? 400,000 cell limit in a single sheet. How, and how much data are they, are they tracking? They're making a sign-in sheet, you know? Like, I would agree. They're, they're, making agree. Like a, they're making an income statement. Don't, don't take more than what you need. Don't pay for more than what you need either, right? Well, they don't, like, it just, Excel just doesn't seem, like, some of them, they remember Excel 2003 and sort of 2007, and they never really used it. Maybe they had to start using it for their business or for, for like, something smaller. And so they went with the thing they were comfortable with, with the file, you know, like it looks like Excel 2003. And that's where a lot of, I mean, I just think that that's still what a lot of people think of it as. And you're missing the market by not grabbing them. If Excel Online was better, ugh. I think they're trying, so the, I mean, that's interesting to me, just, it feels comfortable. Not that yeah, it feels too made up or anything else. It's super comfortable. So Excel Online is obviously free too. Uh, the, the part that really sticks out to me is like, Excel's greatest feature and its greatest detriment is that it's this. It is a four-cornered square. And regardless of those 2003, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, that's all they see. So they don't see all of the other things that have been added into the product. Well, but who they're cares, right? Like, they're not going to use them. Like, that's like, what, what else could they use? Like, they, they think when they use Google Sheets, they're just like, yes, this is the exact amount. See, like Microsoft and all these other companies were spending all this time trying to make like the cheaper like app version. But some people just want like the slimmed down version in life. Like if you guys can make an app that just integrated really well and was free, like if it integrated with spreadsheets, with Google Sheets, but it was like not on a website, I don't know what's that. What does that mean? I don't know. Like it's just, yeah, it's just I just an app like a Microsoft Store app. It's like an Excel light. It's like Excel for small business. That would be Excel online. It already offers that. No, not there. Not there. Not there. Google's benefit they do have for like their add-ins and their marketplace. I think that are pretty good. Yeah, but like I use Supermetrics for like pulling social media stuff, and that is cool. It was good, and it integrated very easily with Google, uh, and that kind of speaks to their thing is like we're yeah. make it as easy as possible for you it's true but like e but even forgetting all that like they don't want to because they don't use that stuff either like they just want a really undaunting experience and like google gives that to them and they don't have to think about their subscriptions like i upgraded my microsoft subscription and then someone from microsoft called me multiple times because i indicated like i i wasn't using something 
you know, and I finally had to tell him to stop calling me. Google doesn't do that. Like, Leave me alone. Yeah, right? I was like, I, I respect like what you're doing, but I just like, I can't, I don't care. You know, I'm not interested. And so like, Google's not doing that. You just, you make a Google Sheet, it's there. Like think about, everyone thinking about like, Trip planning and stuff like that. Yeah, we got some comments here. See where our audience is at. All right, but like you think about trip planning. Yeah. That originally, I did all that in Google Sheets. Hola, como estas? That was from the power user. Is there a small echo effect or is it me? I'm sure it's. I'm sure it is whatever. whatever is it that reverb that's going on from his, uh, his cam? Yeah, I don't know. It's not just the cam, it's like the way it's playing. Sorry, Miguel. Ask a question now. We've got your book, we were talking about your course earlier. Kind of off stream, but yeah. So that's interesting. Like you will see the the open source. Man, can I can I read you what I wrote? In Go the ahead. Book? Go ahead. Okay. Re read us a blur. No, I just like I wrote. I wrote this in the acknowledgments. I'm still trying to wrap my head around some of these thoughts. I said finally, I can't forget to acknowledge Google spreadsheets. For all the great work it has done converting people back to Excel. I love that. That's what I said in 2014, and now listen to me now. So you feel like Excel is converting people to Google Sheets? No, I just think that because Excel, and because when people like around New York will say to me, like, because they'll find out I'm really good at Excel, they'll say things like, my Excel, and they're referring to a Google Sheets like worksheet that they created, like a financial worksheet, and they call it an Excel. And so they think it's the same thing. So I think that you just need to create a tool that actually integrates with Google Sheets, that creates a seamless product. And I don't know exactly how you do that. But it's already in the Office 365 subscription that... No, like it has to be like... That's all of it. What if you could just like go, you could, I guess like you could link to your Google Sheets and open it up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying... Yeah, people, I'm listening. I'm just curious. You, if there's a way, either you got to make it better or you got to make something like it. I think I Power Query is going to end up in Excel Online, and that'll be a huge plus for people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then from there, it's you don't need Power Pivot, you don't need any of the crap. Just being able to cleanse your data in a automated fashion, and you'll be able to call that from a graph API. That's what I'm one hundred percent asking. Mm -hmm. So once you have these things down, you be able to cleanse their data in Excel Online. You don't need a standalone desktop application. So it's no longer going to be tethered to a versioning once again. So when we talked about 2019 even being released, I was shocked. Right, about right. That. So why would that market not latch on something like this? But they need the awareness that Power Query exists. That's not something that's in Google Sheets. I would say Google Sheets' greatest uh, benefit was that they have the dynamic array functions way before Excel ever did. Yeah, yeah. And those were incredible. And I was like, why don't we have something this simple? Yeah, I guess like I hear you. I just think they're two different markets. Like, no, I would agree too. But how do I how do we move someone from Google Sheets over to here, or are they moving over here because they're frustrated back to Google Sheets? They don't want to like they don't want to sign up for like Office three sixty five unless I know. they have to, which is a shame because they get so much more than what uh, Google Business offers. Yeah, but they get that for free. Like, you're still Some just do. think organizationally, you have to pay ten dollars a month, ten to fifteen. For a Google business. Yeah, but if you're running it from your Gmail like account, like you're good. Google business, right? Not no, personal I'm just saying, Well, I'm just saying like that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, who are you trying to get to? The people who are like who like Google Sheets in the way that I'm describing do not care about running it from their like. Yeah, but give me a give account. me a headcount like three people in a small office. Room. I think it's much bigger than you. I think that like there's a what huge. What is a large problem. enterprise that's running Google business? That's like the that point. Now. Like you're still thinking enterprise. They no, I'm, I'm thinking like three to five people, like the cat shelter that I help. They all run Google business, probably five logins. Okay. But then this way they're still administratively keeping all their data within a central. Yeah, I mean a lot of people will like get the get that too. I'm just saying like the Google usage, the Google Sheets usage is just overlooked. I think it's like because it's like you know it's not. Yeah, it's not an enterprise thing, but a lot of nonprofits are using it. A lot of if you're a scrappy office, like you're using Google Sheets, you're not using Excel. Oh, 365 is donated to nonprofits. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so no, I know. I don't know what to tell you, but like, it's just it's not. It's fascinating. Yeah, I think I think Google Sheets is like a much. It's less scary. Like it doesn't feel as engine. It just doesn't feel as like. If anyone has any thoughts out in the it's chat, it's a user experience. Now. It comes. It's like I don't know, man. 
digital marketing agencies usually use the G platform. They do. Tons of them. No, yeah, lots of them do. Previous places. Why don't, that. But, you know, I'm not an Excel. Like, I use it just here and there. But why don't you, we should ask some Google people. We should have them come on Excel TV and describe. Oh, man. What they like about it. Is there like a yeah, Sheets, Sheets, Sheets TV? G, G Sheets? I don't think so. I mean, I mean, you can branch off a little subsidiary. No, I don't want to be. I don't want to be G Sheets TV, but I do want to. I do want the people on the G Sheets side. Okay, so here's how I'm going to get them. Like, I'm going to start maybe offering some. No, I don't know how often, but like, I'll start thinking about like bringing some G Sheet content on here, and I think that that's a way to get them. Like, to bring them in and to realize it's just you're using a spreadsheet. And, I, and maybe through the use of Excel TV. They See if there's see. a community contributor, ask them either if they started over here and they went over there for a particular reason or just ask them why they never come over. I think that would be interesting content yeah. for people like me. I think that people just kind of fall into stuff too. Like, I don't know why I'm, I fell into the Microsoft stack. Like, I just did because I went to companies that use yeah. it, right? So, yeah. like, you know, some people just fell into Google. Um, still, though, I, I really think that, like, I think. I think you should find out, we should all find out why people are using Google Sheets yeah. more. We're all in the business of solving problems. Let's see, we've got another comment here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see let's what see. we got here. Man, Man the phonetics, the phonetics on, on that one. one. <laughs> G Sheets. <laughs> it's true. All right, so. Uh, um, a lot of things to think about here. Yeah, like the right? future and how to get people from where they're currently at, maybe where we think they would be most helpful. It's like, you know, I built that. Um, there's that Glide, the Glide API, or have you used that? Graph? No, this is the Glide. Glide, Glide is like, I used it the other day to create that like um, Excel keyboard shortcut app. Oh yeah, I remember you seen. So like, you can go check it's it out Facebook. on our Facebook. Um, what did I do? I used Power Query to pull in the Microsoft keyboard shortcut website, and I sewed them all together, you know, just big append query. Then I had to take that and I pasted it into Google Sheets. And you know I can open it, but it was like, easy. Oh yeah. Right, paste it in, and then I connect this like Glide app to Google Sheets, and it creates like an app on like a really easy app on your phone. And it's actually kind of cool. Like it's not there yet. It's like very basic. Yeah. yeah. It looked clean um, from what I saw. Yeah, it's very. But like if you could, like that type of integration, if you could just streamline that. But don't ask people to become like part of the Microsoft universe while doing it. Just give them a way to do it. You know, I think you've got to slowly like bring them in. You can't just like they like are signing their life into Microsoft. They they would be. So the part that's going on now is obviously the Power Platform, where it's mm -hmm. load or no code, build your own mobile app, build your own dashboard, build your own automation yeah. platform. I wonder if we're giving people too much all at once. I think that uh, this is where the future is. That you can't expect. Look, I'm not like a religious person at all, all right? Uh oh, I okay. thought we were gonna do any religion or politics. Oh yeah, I know. But like, this is this is like I just because I grew up like in, in the Jewish like community, and there's this like um, there's the biblical story, right, where um, the the groups of Jews like going to Israel, they weren't allowed to go in, right, because I can't remember why. It was like it wasn't with the Ra. I think it was because they believed the spies, right, about how bad it was gonna be there, and so they weren't allowed to go in. And uh, so it was really for the next generation. I just, I, I think of that as like this metaphor, like it, it feels early and it feels, how do you fix this problem? But I think you just fix, you just keep going with it because a lot of it's just changing very quickly. Oh, yeah. And so, um, you know, I think you just have to trust that the change will go with it. That's kind of my view on it. Cause like, what is the right answer? Yeah, so the thing that I'm seeing or the term that I hang my hat on is citizen developer. Where it's just like people who had to get something done. Yeah. And they're very resourceful in the way that they do it. Either now it's a Bing or a Google search, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm someone who started in VBA. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you started in terms of your language either, but there, there was a clear path to other things once you had the fundamentals down. Mm -hmm. And now, how many different products or things can you touch? Either open source community or enterprise ready applications. But people got resourceful over time. And right. whether that's been because of the internet or it's been because of just, they have to get it done. I'm not really sure. But All people are a multi, like, you know, switch yeah, they'll figure it out. Yeah, they'll figure it out. I mean, the idea of being like a citizen, 
What did you call that? Developers, what it's called. I mean, like, there's so many different names for that. I mean, I feel like that that's always been kind of like a role. I think it's now more like, so I guess here's the thing, okay? It used to be you could be that in a company and that was like different, all right? Now you have to be that. Like, now you kind of have to like learn that as a skill to be able to solve these problems. And that's why sticking your like, um, you know, planting your stake into one platform, into one thought is not gonna help you out. Um, especially because these the data problems don't care the technology you use to solve them, despite what like companies will say. Oh, yeah. like, they, they don't get that kind of extreme like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, like, yeah. No one's going to specialize in one platform. That's the only thing they ever do for. Well, some it. people, well, some people will, and some people, and it used to be you could. I really like did not think Excel would be where it is now, but I don't know what the future is. That's what but you have a four-day course now that goes from Excel to R and Power BI. So that's sure. Like, that's like that feels. I like that course. It's a great course. Everyone should take it. But I'm still thinking ahead of that because that's just because we're just starting to. We're really just starting to get like how people um, need to use all these technologies and how fast they need to learn them. Yeah. You know, uh, and I think that before that whole education part becomes commodified, like where it looks like old Horizon courses, I'd like to like. <laughs> have like you know, or what is it, New Horizons? New Horizons yeah. like old New Horizon <laughs> courses. Like I would like to, um, yeah, yeah like put out some, some, put out some good material before like it's, before it's the kind of onslaught. Planting the seeds for like the next three to five years of what's coming. That's what I'm kind of seeing. Yeah. yeah, it's just that like it's harder and harder to predict. Like it's just like what are these add-ins in Excel now? You can use Data Streamer, uh, so you can do IoT devices in Excel. Which is insane. So, like, this whole time I've been looking at devices to, um, like, to figure out how to, if I grill something, like, how to do sensors on that. Yeah. And I was looking at Raspberry Pi. And, yeah. and now, like, just to be able to do that in Excel, like, that was my dream the whole time. And now it's uh, just a free add in, com add ins, enable data streamer. My IoT. That'd be cool. And then I can like, start like plotting my grills. Yeah. And then they have team collaboration. So, especially if you're within those environments where, Small, medium-sized business. You can tag people and do threaded commenting. So you're getting yeah. away from the notebooks. So that's one of the benefits of like the the G platform. Yeah, it had that. It had like that. we're just catching up to certain things, but then other things were like, how are we forward thinking? So Power Pivot, obviously getting past the road limitations that currently existed. Power Query, if we're able to automate that from an API call, I think huge. Uh, Excel online, if they get Power Query, I also think that would be a huge boon. Just because it's not big data all the time, it's it's more realistically the small data problems that people are just trying to overcome, right? Yeah, I mean, they may support like the big data problems, but like big data reduced to its components are small, yeah, are small problems, and that's the ones that like we're solving every day. Yeah, through VBA or spaghetti code. Or yeah, doing. and whatever happened to Hadoop? You know, it came and went before I really understood what it did. Uh, that's where you gotta. I mean, be forward thinking, like. <laughs> Where are you going to invest all your time? It's true, and that was an open source one too. Like that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I should say I swear God what it did. But yeah. Don't quiz me. Don't quiz me. Well, that was even Microsoft. They did the uh, Azure Data Lake, and they had a USQL, which was a combination of C Sharp and SQL, and they just killed it last month. Yeah. So it's just don't become the expert in something unless you're starting to see like actual community use. That's it's true. Well, like I was using Link. Do you remember Link? Oh, yeah. L Y N C. Uh, no, not that. This is L I N K. Oh. This is a different link. I should have a link book here. Hmm. Oh no. Let's see if I if I can find it. It was like the pocket link guy. Here we go. Right. L I N Q. L I N Q. Yeah. So like, this was um, this was sort of doing, like you could you had two syntaxes in it. Like you could do from like if you were doing a database call. You'd say from C in customers, join, and then you'd say select new. So this was kind of one of the first attempts to do like a, a semantic version of that. Or you could do this kind of version, which is a little more R looking, right? Yep. So this was like big, but I think that M can definitely replace this if it's not like. Is this a language that's now deceased? Or I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with it. I'm going to just see how well this <laughs> goes here. Do we have some more questions there in the chat? Um, no. Nope. Nope. Awesome. That's, That's it. it. They're, they've abandoned us. Oh well, I'm sorry to have lost you guys here in some of the uh, some of the depths. Well, kind of thinking about forward forward thing with different technologies. Really loved kind of hearing about your course, especially moving people from Excel to R. I mean, the R thing, Ryan Wade, and you guys this course that you have out there too. It's just 
high quality content is the topic that more people are talking about. I know it's between Q and S, that's about where I stop for my R learning. So hopefully I can purchase that at some point. All right, awesome. Let's jump on this weird train that George and everyone else is changing. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's a it's lot of fun. fun. I think we got, yeah. well, let's see here. Yo, yo, what, what up, what up? up? What do you guys, do you guys think, think about, about Panama? Panama? Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, that's Miguel. From uh, I mean, Power Query yeah. Solutions. But, but what's the... That's, what's that's what's where he lives. I would love to come visit. Yeah, like, I mean, is they, like, it sounds like a great place. Uh, so the part that I really appreciate about Miguel is he does yeah. a lot of uh, Spanish content. Yeah. And also English. So in that way he's putting out double the amount, to be honest with you. But he does, he's not leaving out an entire community. He really cheap. It's kind no, of I think the local Panama market. That's awesome. I would love to come to Panama. I've heard good things. Very pretty. I hear. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's something there's something interesting about that because I think that like um, there's also a lot of emerging markets who are really just jumping into Excel and they don't have the background that like we do here yep. so they can lend themselves to Power Query a lot more easily um, and uh, definitely in South America there's like just a ton of awesome new Excel stuff it's kind of like I've seen that too it's like kind of, of like it's yeah. like kind of incredible it's very exciting like. Just the amount of non-English speaking community members that have kind of gotten a massive spotlight. If we could like translate our courses into Spanish, I don't know how to do that, but I think about it. That's that's your uh, that's your challenge. How can they reach a much larger market? Well, I just think the non-English speaking community. Yeah, like I just want to reach everyone, and I think like the stuff. I just um, it's just very it's just very cool to see the stuff. It's coming. I don't know if this is fair to say, but like, there's a point in the aux, like in the U.S., like we were just building a lot of add-ins, we were doing a lot of EBA stuff, and now there's other parts of the world that are are, are yeah. doing that now too, and the stuff that they're putting out, like ours has the the past. We still view it like through the past, but um, there's just a lot of new things that I've just not seen before. Just, yeah, it's like very exciting times, um, and I'm just kind of in the backseat for some of it. I don't, I don't really know where it's going. Yeah. So what is like one thing that you're excited about, like just in general? Maybe a lot of people are not talking about it. Maybe they are starting to talk about it. I mean, I'm just excited for like, the future is... of like Power BI. Like I see the idea that I could like, okay, so before I was creating these decision support systems in Excel and I loved it for that, right? And that was like really cool. Um, but now uh, like, Using Excel for that is less interesting because you have web now. Yeah. But like Power BI keeps trying to position itself as that, but it's not that yet. But at a certain point, there may be a world in which like I have some sort of input, they put stuff in, and it goes off and runs like where I was teaching people how to do a Monte Carlo simulation like in Excel. We could do that in the cloud in seconds and they'll spit it back out. And if the canvas of like Power BI was a lot better where I needed it to be, I could see myself using that. They have some introductory things with third parties building, but nothing native to the application. It would have to be native. And this, yes. is the, this is the like reason why the add-in market never worked with Excel. I mean, it did for a small point, like I think, but like broadly speaking, people used to say, well, why don't we make an add-in market? Why don't we make the place? It's no one. They suffer from the Game Boy problem, like in the early what days. What is the Game Boy problem? You had to have the Game Boy. You had to have the same game, right? If you wanted to play against someone, you had to have the exact same game. So you had to find people who had that um, Game Boy cartridge, right? And so you'd have to, if you use this Excel add-in, you can't send it anywhere, yeah. right? And so unless you had this penetration to a corporation, which was based off of years of like relationships, that usually started in the early days, like your add-ins DOA, you can sell it to the consumer market and make some good money, but you can never build the grand vision. Uh, like it will never be used by everyone. You know what I mean? Oh, that's what I saw. In a lot of times I would have to deconstruct a workbook that was created by a third party add-in. Yeah. Where it was, the developer was no longer upgrading it and we switched versioning or uh, obviously it could be a cost constraint too, but mm -hmm. it was just, when you get tethered to an add-in, that's never a good place to be. It's true. Not it's that funny. there's not some good ones out there, but when you're going from maybe like a 2010 deployment up to a 2016 and everything's starting to break from the core mm -hmm. vanilla Excel. That's not a good place to be. No, that's not a good place to be. Yeah. Um, and I saw it firsthand, so that's why I bring that up. But just no, to be conscious of like the third party market that is available in Power BI, they can start doing some of these things, but they could be out of business tomorrow. It's true. And like, you know, for a while there were spark lines. Like, there was this really cool free add in spark lines in Excel that I thought was really cool. But then Microsoft like made a few of those, you know? 
Oh, the spark so, lines? Yeah, yeah, not not anywhere close to what was in the library. Oh, I believe like, it. But like, what Microsoft did was a lot more reliable, like because it's native, like yep. it just is, and it's not open source. Um, but you know, I don't want I should, I say that with like a lot of respect. I can't remember the person who made it, but it was like a really cool product, and, and they spent a lot of time. Yeah, at the end of the day, I hope that they pull out the checkbook and just purchase this company and integrate it natively because that was such a good idea. Whether yeah, that happens all the time or not, I don't know. Yeah, and like that's what you'd like to see in a perfect world, right? Yeah, and I would like to see. If there was just a way that I could just treat the Excel spreadsheet as also like a web page, I don't know how to describe it, so that it was a hybrid between cells, but also it allowed me to do things that was almost like XML design, so that I could have both and it could be seamless. And that would be cool, because that would give me the flexibility to, to build the things that I want to build and like give them their true design. Because the way I'm using Excel is to build these mini applications, all right? And I still love using it for that. So Power Apps would be kind of your wheelhouse, but I also think that if you're to do it, it'd probably be the Graph API. You could do some posting. But look, we could take a look into it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's the future I need is like, to, you know, to, like, no one wants to. I want to use. I want people to still use user forms, like in some way, but they don't have to be the old clunky VB like 6.0 user form. Like, why can't we build a web-based version of this and start moving people over to JavaScript? That's Power Apps, but it's a whole other license. I don't even know what Power Apps is. It's part of the Power is. Platform, yeah. Well, but like, I don't want like a platform. I just want to be able to do it and send it out so someone can download it and use it. I know. I know. I mean, like... It's a citizen developer, low no code. You can build a mobile phone application by treating it like a Microsoft Access form where you're literally driving fields onto a canvas and you now have a mobile app developed. Yeah, but like I want something that's like more Excel in mind that has like specific stuff that's like made for Excel. It would write back to an Excel spreadsheet wherever you're entering things. It, it does everything you're kind of I talking about. I want it about. to write back. I want to use Excel as my like plat. I want it to be in Excel. Yeah, I don't like, think they're going to get that. They're like, not. They're not moving that direction that I'm seeing. I mean, like you know, there's. I want to be able to build form. Like I kind of want to see. Do you remember the old like the um, macro? Shoot, what was it called? If you right click on a new worksheet tab, you can oh, the create a macro tab? tab. Yeah, you can create a macro tab that has a user form ish yep. looking thing. That uses the Microsoft Common Controls. Boy, would it be great to have something like that. I don't know, man. I mean, That's a stretch. It would be nice, but all right, not, well, not bringing... is, Google Sheets might put that in there. They might build something like that. So, you know, I don't know how you're going to do it. That's not on me. I'm, I'm, I'm not on the product team. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't see the life of VBA going forward. Yeah, forget VBA. I mean, sorry guys. I love VBA. VBA. Like, we're gonna keep it, but yeah. like, uh, forget like that being a VB thing though. That's yeah. a different language. I would agree. If I saw more of a spotlight in the JavaScript, Excel, and like a community spotlight of that, I would you be could, curious. You could create a, a JavaScript library, right? That allows you. It wouldn't be exactly like VBA, but you, it would give you a lot of the same semantics and like allow people to move over very quickly. You know, like that wouldn't be that hard. You overload some operators, you know, like I think you could, I think one could do it. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna try that either. I've already got enough. Looks like we got a couple new messages here. We're gonna catch up and we're gonna go get out of here. Okay. What do you guys think about Panda? Do you notice that Panama Power Query, Power Query, all start with the letter P? Coincidence? I don't think so. The more I learn Power Query and Power BI, the more I like it. They might embed Power Apps inside an Excel spreadsheet as an app. That would be cool. But that's, that's about, about it. it. You could iframe it, I believe. I just want something that, like, I make. I like making little mini applications. I'm not going to use Power Apps. Like, I just liked Excel for it. It's, I, I was with you there on the embedded Excel online spreadsheet, and yeah. you could have buttons in HTML, CSS that could call the Graph API to write back to that mm. Excel spreadsheet. But that just overcomplicates things for the people who, it's are, true. who literally just want to make something. They want to just make something. And like Excel was a great place to do that. It was like a great maker platform. And now like if that's really what you want to know, Google owns the maker. Like when you think maker, you usually think Google. Less so these days. I mean, Microsoft has great commercials, like yeah. getting us to rethink that. But still, they had like Arduino. Um, they had the, the like stuff beforehand. So I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, I agree. You're, it's you're, a battle for people's time and attention and where they're going to invest their skills.
Hey guys, uh, can you tell us where you're from? Like, not where you're from, excuse me, where you're coming in through, like, YouTube? Facebook or uh, you can see the YouTube logo there. Oh, is that? Yeah. I didn't. So I didn't was, see that. It was a different logo. You I guess I could see that, but I, I wasn't sure what that was. Did you have any comments on your Facebook? I don't know. Let's see here. I'm gonna mute us here real quick. Comments on. Danny. All right, we lost a few of uh, his. I'm trying to mute us here real quick. I apologize. Phone break. All right. Oh wow, right? You had a ton. I apologize, Rain. We're gonna catch up. Will VB be available in the Drive spreadsheet? And what is the Microsoft Office Insider program? Because a few functions only available on that. Uh, Insider program is it's pretty cool. If you're on O365, it's just a quick XML endpoint uh, edit on your local machine and it'll put you in like insider fast that way you can get some of the new functionalities they're adding before it can is I, released. Can I say something yeah. about that? Okay so like the new like uh, array functions yeah. are on insider right? Yeah. So if you want those you have to go to insider yeah. which is cool to be part of that team but for me as someone who's teaching it I don't feel like teaching it. You right should because I'm teaching yeah. It's not generally deployed. I need it generally deployed, guys. I, I mean, like, I'm still, I, like, I'm going to cringe. I'm going to have to, tr like, teach uh, con control shift enter. So, so that's the thing, right, is that Excel still runs the world. You can't introduce something that's going to completely break everything. So, like, you guys are using the same, like, that's, well, like, that's not, area. That's not, that's you guys, I'm here, I'm here for, excuse, right? it's not about the cell. No, I hear you, I hear you, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, separation like, of church and state. Okay, we build up that wall. Um, yeah, like what I'm saying is though, um, when when Raheem asks about VBA available on OneDrive, it should be the Graph API, and I'll leave that as a resource for everyone to start looking at because you can start calling across. But once again, VBA OneDrive, OneDrive is the cloud based, so all of your stuff needs to be in the cloud. So the Excel file can't be locally stored. That's like, like not, people use Google Sheets, they don't care. Yeah, it's all cloud now. Though, so, like, but in uh, enterprise organizations, except for people are still doing local network storage. Dude, everyone's using local net. Like, they're all just like, what they do is they call it a data lake now, right? Like, and which is just, by the way, like a data lake is just a shared drive. Like, that yeah, is what I've just. It is, it is. People are like, you need a data <laughs> lake. I'm like, they've been dumping files like in the same like shared folder forever. Microsoft making all functions available either desktop version or cloud. Once again, when it comes back to the Insider program, they can't introduce anything that could potentially. Okay, that's break the Area 51 excuse, right? Like that's yeah. why we don't know about aliens because we'd all go crazy. Yeah. Right? Isn't that? Uh, this is like a real secret. Most of the users face issues in using Power BI on a Mac. They're not going to port it over because of the analysis services engine was ADO. Dot net, mm -hmm. so they're not going to completely rewrite that for Mac users. So your best recommendation is to use Parallels. That's what I've used in the past. I mean, isn't what a pain? This is Google Sheets doesn't have this issue. But this is Power BI. I'm just. I know. That's fair. Well, that's fair. They bought Looker. They can. Uh, they can figure they that out. They did buy Looker. And they I will figure it out. I use that platform. It was the biggest piece of dog. S H I T I W. It might be like I don't know. I mean, the two the two big ones, Power BI and Tableau, um, like you know, I used to think they were like they are competing, but Tableau actually is like it is significantly different. In the yeah, it is. And where like the future of Power BI looks cool, like the idea of the drag and drop, do have my analysis. I think Tableau beats it in visualizations, but I think its underlying engine is just. It's not where it needs to be. No. Uh, so Raheem asked about financial modeling in Excel. Still has more scope in learning and making complex models or will be substituted by other technology software. So do you think that internally the skill set of financial modeling will still be pertinent in Excel or do you think like some I of these ideas and other things I, At might least for a while. At least for a while. Because like what I'm running into, at least in like selling my courses here in New York, is I... I like always am afraid I'm gonna run into like people where we're using R and Python now, but the finance shops are not. They're still, everything's still Excel, everything's still VBA. Those add-ins that are being that like these big financial institutions made, um, like Bloomberg, things like that. Excel is a huge part of what they do, and that add-in, like 
owning the ability to have that habit, this yes. whole type of marketing is yep. like very important. Yeah. But at a certain point in the future, it will fall off because the capabilities of what they're going to be able to bring through, you know, the new add-ins, like the new like uh, but even, script even outside, type ones. Even outside of like add-ins or program, the entire industry of accounting and finance will be automated. That is a red target that everyone is looking at. How do we automate this? Yeah, I mean, I hear you. I just, I, I don't think that there's always going to be, like, everything is always being automated all the time, which is to say that, like, once you program something to automate, that you have an automation, now you need another programmer to bring other automations together. And we keep, like, describing that there's going to be a singularity, jobs are going to fall off. And, like, yeah, if you're a radiologist, right, or you're a practice and you employed a whole bunch of radiologists, and now you have a computer that can predict better than a human, or at least you want to integrate that, right? You don't need as many radiologists. Yep. Even if you don't agree that it's predicting better, it still can save your time, right? Yep. So like, I think that's going to change. But there's also going to be a new crop of people who need to program that technology. And that, and that really isn't there yet. So um, I guess I, I don't, I, what I'm saying is like, whatever we do, like finance is not going to lose VBA. And it's not going to lose, because there's always going to be something new to add in. Um, so kind of when we talked yeah, earlier about like the learner path, like them going on to the next thing. Do you see the people that are doing this now taking on a new language or a new development? Yeah, a lot of people are taking on, next level? They're taking on Power BI. Are a they? lot of them are taking are just they're just like using it a little bit. I've like I've been asked to do some training on it specifically, and I think some organizations are concerned because they spend all this time like building the data model, and yeah. now they're like going to unleash it, and then. What are the rules? Are you gonna be allowed to make measurements? You know, like no. these are the things that right. And if you are the type, if you're the like analyst type who wants to tinker, and now you're given Power BI and you're just strapped, right? Yep. Now I'll do this. Now I'll do that. You can drag and drop this. You can touch that filter, right? You're gonna be like, all right, I'm using Excel. Like, yeah. That's no, I would truth. agree. If you're gonna put or yourself into the corner, make sure that this is the corner you wanna be in. Yeah, I think the bigger like the bigger challenge for corporations, like I'm less concerned about figuring out like enterprise versus. I think that a lot of them are not data driven yet. They don't reward a data culture. They just want to buy stuff. And they need to like think a little bit in addition to like having the technology, they need to really like start training the, the place to be like, if you come up with an efficiency, you're gonna be rewarded. Like be that citizen analyst. Developer. Developer. Yeah. And I think I come from more of the analyst side, but it, yeah. essentially like I started in development. So it's like the same yeah. thing. So if you can create a culture that's like always be improving and always be celebrating these things and if someone breaks something you use that like well how did they break it you know if you can do that then like these technologies it's not really just them using it to their fullest they start coming up with new things to do like like oh, I did, always. you know like and like the stuff you've written about like you could you build something with what you think what people will use but once they get into the groove of using it they start thinking like this yeah so, so it's kind of the CICD, right? Continuous improvements and continuous development. Like, yeah, just because they solve this problem doesn't mean that we're out of problems. It, it is like that. I don't. I that acronym makes it sound so boring, though. Really? Yeah. Continuous CIC, improvements. Yeah, continuous. It's just like continuous development. Yeah, I just. I would just be like, sorry, to, I didn't mean to. No, it's good. So it's just I was, like I don't have a tattoo on me yet. No, I just like it's I coming think, soon. Oh, is that the name of your? Is that the name of a company? Or no? Okay, All right. I don't know. I was like, no. I just like. I think that. Um, I think that we because it feels like that's the continuous improvement. Feels like the GEE stuff, you know. I think that so much of like '90s management consultant culture dominates the improvements that we make in companies that people are still just now learning to think about it from a data perspective and how can we empower our employees um, rather than having like someone at the top who has access to everything, wouldn't it make more sense, I don't know, to give people more control at the bottom so that you don't have to manage everything and then, I don't know, you use that knowledge for the system to improve. Yep. Not that's, like, that's the goal of the citizen developers, the frontline workers, there's more of them down here than there is of us up here. Yeah, I just think that, you know, maybe just it needs to flatten a lot more in general and that Listen, if machines are going to be automating everything, then people definitely are your biggest asset now. Because you don't have, uh, you know, you have fewer of them. Uh, I'm sure people will find that. But like, yeah, I just think that, like, you, uh, it, it is more important now to get the value from them. That yep. they, it isn't just about growing a company to have size. Let's see what people have to say here. Here, comment, and Ryan even asked about Python. 
automate the boring stuff is a good website and then also just data cam has some really good courses i kind of recommend those too the, the, i agree with kevin, kevin. The, more the more i learn them, them the more i like it i feel like i'm all at work when it comes to showing these tools to colleagues <laughs> yeah right good stuff man good stuff I love it. all right gang we're gonna go to get out of here mm -hmm. thank you jordan for allowing me to hang out and show you guys a different side of his uh excel team set up here Rufus, a fantastic cat over here. We can, let's 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 get him in the shot. Do a quick quick shot of Rufus here for the group. Hold on. This is my cat. I've had him for many years. There we go. He's like Fifteen now. Now we're gonna start getting some likes. Right. This is it. We should have brought this out first. I know. So we'll start out strong. The official cat of Excel. Sorry. We're no, you're good. Out. We're gonna go and close out here. I would say. Keep on excelling. Yeah, that's right. Can I do that too? But Any, everyone can do it. Some topics we'll go ahead and call up with you guys here with our graph API, uh, some of the Google Sheets, things that you talked about. Just for, I believe, for a good narrative. Uh, just to say, hey, here's what they can do, and then we can start having a conversation on that, especially with future videos. Okay. And then kind of with your course, really just telling the journey and how people can go from Excel to R and then Power BI. I think that's incredibly powerful because. It's no longer, can you do this one thing exceptionally well, it's can you be good at a lot of broad things, and then at least have one area of depth. And are, it doesn't are, you have to be me, are you telling me how I should post this? No, no, it, it doesn't, no, I'm just saying for the audience here to kind of recap what we talked about, but yeah. have an area of depth, saying, and the depth yeah. can be your fundamentals, but don't go so deep into a technology where you're gonna be stuck in there three well, or five years. But unless you like it, like if you love Make that sure that that technology is gonna be around. Make sure to be around. I mean, listen, I'm we're doing. I'm, I love VBA. Like, yeah. If you're open, you know, like uh, I tried to go for as long as I could without mentioning Gary V. Okay, but like, if, yeah. like, like, like his whole thing is like to go out and just go do it, right? Yeah. And like be okay to pivot and all that stuff. Like, look, if you were born into a technology and you have to like learn another one, I want to say that. When you learned it, it may have been a lot harder to learn another technology. But what we have to understand today is that this stuff is built to be learned. It's built to move laterally. And that um, you will learn it, and it will be a lot easier than you expect, because it's built on a lot of that stuff that you came to love. And in that way, when like you use it, it's kind of cool, because you're like part of that journey. Yep. If you ever feel like contributing, because now you see that, like you see what you would have added, you can with a lot of these new ones. So it's a new way of thinking about it. VBA is very rigid. You know, oh, yeah. it doesn't have that. Like, it has a community. It's like, what is Microsoft and add slicer options? You know, like, yeah. wait, we got to think beyond that a little bit. Oh yeah. So oh, VBA is a great place to start or end up. That's I. Where you gotta, it's that's just where the journey takes you. I mean, it's a place where a lot of people start. Um, it isn't necessarily where I started. It was just kind of like where it, it's where I journey man, I guess. Like, oh yeah. So. I don't, I don't really know. I just think that you should pick something in this data space and you should be good at it. And that right now, and years ago I couldn't say this, Microsoft has like has tons of exciting products. Like and I say this independent of like whatever magic, yep. you know, eight ball quadrant that people are using. Like this is like a good time. It's an interesting time um, for Microsoft. And they're really, maybe what Apple was kind of doing with like the phone, I think Microsoft tried to do, but they couldn't. But yeah. going back to like fundamentals, oh, yeah. like they are doing a lot of cool stuff that um, Google Sheets can't do. Can't like it can't do. You know. Uh, let's just leave it like that. All right. Thank you everyone for your time. All right, see ya. Keep on excelling. Mm -hmm. We demand you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, where's, where's the? the